Hello everyone and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy Turnabout Samurai. I'm Dr. Charles and with me again is my fiance. Hello! Yes, okay. And we are going to pick right up where we left off and find out exactly what Cody saw and if he saw him something important for this trial. I'm betting he did. So, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Let's get going. Cody, I need to ask you something very important. What did you see on the day of the incident? I got here on that day around 2. I had come in through the woods out back so the old lady wouldn't see me. I kind of got lost though. I was in there for maybe half an hour or so. Then I finally got to the studio. After that... What is it, Cody? The, the steel samurai killed the bad guy. He used a samurai spear. Just like always. One shot, one kill. It happened so fast I got scared. I went home after that. I, I see. It must have been hard for you. Man, you say those nice things, but it's obvious you aren't speaking from the heart. <laughs> um, right. Mia? Yes? I think we can say for sure this means the Steel Samurai did it. True enough. And the director has an alibi, so it wasn't him. Indeed. So, the only person left who could, who it could have been is Will Powers. I have to admit, it's kind of a shock. But if you put this boy on the witness stand, your client will be guilty for sure. Let's not call him then. I think that would be wise. Best to leave this one alone. Not so fast, pal? Oh! oh God. I heard everything. This boy is a key witness. And he's under police protection starting now. Thank God. Come on, son. You got a rendezvous with me down at the precinct. No, I ain't going. What? That didn't go so well. We're back to zero leads. And now we have a serious handicap in court. Great. What are we going to do, Mia? Well, hmm. <laughs> She's going to ghost out and be like, well, I've done all I can do. <laughs> Why? I really need <laughs> I really need to be going. Don't worry, Phoenix. I'm sure you'll be fine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on to the trial tomorrow, please. I need you there. Phoenix, can I ask you something? Do you really believe that Mr. Power is innocent? I believe. Of course he is. That's all I wanted to hear. Excellent. I'll see you in court then. Great. Thanks, Mia. See you soon. Somebody put him to sleep. I know. They didn't just give us random sleeping pill bottle. Right. And him, like, emphasizing that he took the snap for so long. I know. For it to not be important, you know what I mean? October 19th, 9.42 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Ding, ding! Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? Why do you look so unhappy? Oh, 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 nothing. <laughs> really, it's nothing. Right. right, Mia? Uh-oh, she looks even unhappier. <laughs> Phoenix, your client is now practically a dead man walking. Wow, you're you're a dead woman walking. Perhaps that's why I feel particularly close <laughs> to him. <laughs> this is no time for dead people jokes, please. <laughs> you know we're going into this trial, a uh, trial utterly defenseless. Yet, if Mr. Powers is truly innocent... We should be able to find something overlooked in the evidence to prove it. The sleeping bottle. Something overlooked? We have to find something, Phoenix, today. It's that or lose the trial. Sheesh. This isn't going to be easy. I feel like this one's going to be hard and like, intense and I'm not ready. District courtroom, courtroom number four. <laughs> All right. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. Wait. Don't people know that Mia died? Yes. Then how could she show up in court? Well, she's in Maya's body, so they don't know any different. She's in Mia's body! That photo just now showed boobs. Well, yes, but no. Yes! The ghost, the ghost is in the little sister's body. No. Yes! It's Mia! It's Mia's spirit inside of Maya who is channeling her. Okay. Like, the older sister is possessing the younger sister. I understand sister. that, but that's so not it's... what they're portraying here. They literally just showed Mia. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. 
The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Just because she has boobs doesn't mean the body's in it. Like, it's still her physical appearance and her body. To us, it looks different because we know that that's the game's way of portraying that Maya is possessed. Okay. An unexpected fact has come to the attention of the court. Yesterday, we learned that there were other people present at the studio. Today, I would like to show evidence proving they had nothing to do with the murder. Very well. You may call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. I wonder if it'll be that producer. The prosecution calls Mr. Salmonella to the stand. Or that director. Will the witness state his name and profession? How rude can you get? Oh god, I You cannot. don't know me. I'm the director. I make the steel samurai noob. R-O-F-L. <laughs> I didn't press. Sh Salmonella, I'm a director. Television. Were you at Global Studios on the day of the murder? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. Very well. Please testify to the court about the events of that day. Phoenix, let's start by picking this testimony apart. Just like old times. If Powers is innocent, you know what that means. I feel like he did it. He looks like the person to have sleeping pills. Someone in the trailer on that day did it. Right. She doesn't waste any time putting on the pressure. He just looks like he would, you know. I don't know. He looks suspicious. I still am questioning the Producer other lady. lady, yeah. I was at the studios around 9 that morning. During the morning, I was doing, um, an action scene run through. It took a lot more time than I thought it would. I heard that everyone else ate lunch in the employee area. But I had a meeting in the Studio 2 trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. I don't like the way she's looking right there. I know. Looks a little like... Like she's like looking at Jack Hammer like right. she loves him or something. Or hates him maybe. We were in the meeting until around 4. During the meeting, well, I'm pretty sure no one left their chairs. That's about it. Hmm. The time of Mr. Hammer's death was 2.30. And according to your testimony, you were meeting at the time. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Let's go. All right. Getting ready to mash P here. I was at the studios from around 9 that morning. Is that when you always come into work? Oh, oh no. I come in at all sorts of hours. It's the industry way. Yeah, I know about the freaks in your industry. Still, for with... For, for what it's worth. For what it's worth, I was pretty busy all day. Tell us more about that. During the morning, I was doing, um, an action scene run-through. In the employee area? That's right. It was a fight scene between the Steel Samurai and the Evil Magistrate. Was anyone else at the run-through? Oh, yeah. That Shikuri lady was sitting there watching the whole thing. LOL. She was cheering on Hammer, if you can believe it. She certainly has the lungs for it. <laughs> anyone else? Nope. Just, just four. It took a lot more time than I thought it would. Why? Why did it go on so long? Um, I'm pretty sure you've already heard about this, but WP twisted his ankle during the run-through key. Oh, right. That's the limp. Which, of course, led to me missing my lunch. Ross! Screaming? Rolling on the floor screaming? Maybe. <laughs> Ross rolling on the floor starving? Starving! Oh. <laughs> I hear that everyone else ate lunch in the employee area. What exactly did they have for lunch? T-Bone steak. The assistant cooked some up. The assistant. Penny, Penny cooked up the table steak. Cooked up the steak, so she would have been very able to put sleeping pills or sleeping powder into Will Power's steak. Very true. Because she cooked it up. Not Penny. Come to think of it, there was a plate with some empty bones on it in the employee area. Everyone else, meaning the witness, did not eat with them. But I had a meeting in the Studio 2 trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. We were in the meeting until around 4. During the meeting, well, I'm pretty sure no one was in their chairs. Phoenix, if his alibi holds... Oh yeah, I forgot to press. <laughs> well, no, like, I didn't forget. I was thinking about Penny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I had a meeting in Studio 2 trailer. So he skipped lunch. Okay. So in the end, you didn't get to eat? Yeah, no steak at least. Can you believe it? <laughs> that must have been tough. Doesn't, Doesn't something about that seem... Oh, that's you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Doesn't something about that <laughs> seem a little odd to you? Uh, it's a little vague. I guess. Let's try... 
It's contradictory? Yeah. Yeah, it does seem odd now that you mention it. Mr. Manella. Hmm? What about you, you like? When I went to Studio 2, I saw something on the table there. That's right, there was steak on the table at side Studio 2. Oh, yeah. Remember? Two plates. The same kind of plates as the ones in the employee area. Who ate lunch there? Murph! No, where I am. Um, uh, yeah. Good call. I, uh, I was embarrassed, so I didn't mention it. But I did eat, after all. Why lie? A T-bone steak, you mean? Yeah, well, I mean the assistant went through all that trouble. I brought it to the trailer thinking I could eat it later. Clearly a man who likes to eat. I'd suspect it as much. So when exactly did you eat? We took one break during that meeting. I uh, wolfed it down then, drool. Oh my god. A mental image I will carry with me to my grave. Wait a second. If they took a break in the meeting, that contradicts his testimony because he uh -huh. said that they didn't get out of the chair. I'll yes. press on that. Uh huh. Right there, press. Boom. You didn't take a single break. Err, uh, well, yeah, not, not a one. <laughs> hmm, he's sweating so much, I wonder. If only I had an idea. Wait a second. Maybe I do have an idea. Press, press harder. harder. Wait a second. Mr. Manella, you've just contradicted yourself. Didn't you just tell the court that you ate that T-bone steak during a break? Oops, Rolf. Well, um, Mr. Manella, what's this about? Well, yeah, I guess we did take a little break. Phoenix, great job. If they took a break, one of them could have gone to the studio during that time. Yeet. Woot woot. Your Honor, I call on the witness to testify to the court about this break. Very well. Mr. Manella, your testimony, please. Erk. <laughs> uh oh. Edgeworth is laughing. He's ready for this. Oh, God. The break. Yeah, for what it's worth, we took a break, Rolf. But it was only 15 minutes. 15! That's only 13 in base 12. What? What? I'm not doing complex math right now. Not enough time for someone Common to say. Core math. Commit murder in Studio One. There's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak, if you ask me. Well, themes. you know what? It can happen in 15 minutes. I can kill someone in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should I? I don't think it would even be enough time for that. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. Sorry, I got my own self chuckled up there. Uh huh. Yeah, but it was only 15 minutes. Chris. What if? What were you doing for those 15 minutes? Eating my T-bone steak, what else? There were two plates on the table? Oh, right. The other one was Diva. Sorry. Oh. Diva Squares plate. Diva Squares, the producer. To eat a T-bone steak in 15 minutes, that's quite a feat. Not enough time to someone say commit a murder? Can't put a time Why is that? Committing a murder. It didn't even go further right. than that. I have to say, you look like a guy who gets through his meals pretty fast. <laughs> well, I was facing a cold, slightly chewy T-bone steak. Even though I have to take my time eating that kind of food. LOL. Well, well, Phoenix. The testimony was too short to wring any kind of useful information out of. All you have to do is prove that he was able to go to Studio One at that time. Oh, great. Is that all? Press this again. Press that again? Because remember, that was the one we pressed, and then, like, nothing happened. Oh, we were yeah. supposed to press the first And then part, press and then that. Pre yeah, okay, gotcha. and then Edgeworth objects. <clears throat> Haven't we had enough of this pointless line of questioning? That's not Edgeworth's voice. Your Honor. The testimony to this point has made one certain fact okay, painfully yeah. clear. The people in the trailer had nothing to do with this murder. It was impossible for any one of them to go to Studio One. What? Something wrong, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Surely you aren't suggesting one of the people in the trailer went to Studio One. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Phoenix, this is critical. Think about it before you give your answer. Do you claim someone from the trailer went to Studio One? Uh, they couldn't have. It was blocked. But the... the... Okay. I mean, like, because the only other people there... We have Penny, which I'm suspicious of now because of the steak thing and the yeah. sleeping bottle... And she's also shorter than Will Power, so if she's wearing the suit, then, That's like... That's true. Okay. And she's the assistant, so she knows where everything's at. I think it was Penny, 
or D Vasquez, but she was the trailer. So I'm just going to say no, because we have no proof to back up that they could have gotten around. We didn't find a secret path or anything. No, it's impossible. I don't want to write off so many possible suspects, but I can't keep claiming the impossible either. I agree that it was impossible for anyone in the trailer to go to the studio in that time. Ha <laughs> ha! I thought you might be thoughtlessly treading on thin ice again, but I see you had at least an inkling of the truth. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? It's quite simple. True, the break in the trailer meeting came right at the time of death. However, the path from there to the scene of the crime was blocked. The fallen Mr.'s monkey head barred Wait. the way. She called it Mr. Monkey Head, and he just called it Mrs. Monkey Head. I don't think it matters. <laughs> At around 2.15, a strong gust of wind knocked off the studio mascot's head. Ergo, when the people in the trailer took a break at 2.30, the way to the studio was blocked. Blocked by Mrs. Monkey's severed head. Mr. It says Mrs. Mr. It's actually Mr. Monkey, ah! <laughs> but Edgeworth has a point, and somehow I feel no desire to correct him. I believe we have seen enough evidence. False. And I bow out. I would like to relieve Mr. Manila from the stand. What? what? It's over? Eesh. Very well, the court's opinion on this case is as follows. We have found that there were several other people in Studio 2 on the day of the murder. However, it is also clear that none of these people could have gone to Studio 1. They therefore have no relation to this case. Furthermore, with regards to the photo with the steel samurai, given the size of the costume, no one other than Mr. Powers could have worn it that day. All that is lacking is decisive evidence that he is the one who did it. If we had that, I'm afraid I would have to find Mr. Powers guilty. Your Honor, the prosecution is pleased to announce that we indeed have the decisive evidence. A witness. No! Eee, the boy. The boy! Who is this witness, Mr. Edgeworth? My witness saw the very moment when the Steel Samurai skewered the victim. Order! I will have order! I see. The court will take a ten minute recess, after which we will hear your witness. Court is adjourned for recess. Ugh. What do we do now, Mia? If everyone in that trailer has an alibi... <laughs> I'm sorry, Phoenix. I guess I was wrong. Mia! Don't tell me you're giving up. If you give up, what hope do I have? Don't get me wrong. I've never given up on a trial before, not while there was a chance. Only one thing became clear in your cross-examination. The people in the trailer could not have gone to Studio One. I thought there was more in more to it more oh to it God. than that. <laughs> but I was wrong. That's all there is. You okay over there? Yeah. Um, oh, what's going to happen to me? Uh, it kind of seems like everyone's in that courtroom thinks I did it. They think I'm a murderer. Don't worry, Mr. Powers. If you're innocent, we will prove it. I guarantee it. Leave it to us and be yourself. Be strong. You are the Steel Samurai hero to children everywhere, after all. I... You... Thanks. Okay, Phoenix. This one's for the kids. Let's do it. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do it for the kids. Do it for well, the actually, children. Actually, we're not doing anything for children on this channel. For the kids. Do it for the adults. FTK. What? October no. 19th, 11.15 a.m. <laughs> 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 Court is back in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution has a concern. As our witness is a grade schooler of tender years, and this is a murder case, we worry that the defense might cause unnecessary trauma with this cruel questioning. What? Nice to see Edgeworth taking the moral high ground. However, we have no choice. The prosecution calls her Cody Hackins to the stand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, perhaps you could arrange a box for him to stand on. <laughs> oh, right. God, please bring him a box. One of the donut crepes should do. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I bet if we look through the photos that he has. Maybe, yeah. We can probably look at the photo here in a minute. Yeah. Will the witness state his name and grade in school? <laughs> witness? What? Just because you're all going up don't mean you can push me around. Murph. Cody? Answer his question, okay? 
Hey, it's you, the nice lady. I'm Cody Hackins. I'm in second grade. I get the feeling this is going to be a long, long day. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember that you're speaking to a child. Try to be gentle. <sighs> Witness, uh, I mean, Cody. He's having trouble with the gentle thing. <laughs> you were present, um, uh, you were at Global Studios on the day of the, uh, incident. You got a problem with that? Please, tell us what you saw that day. What, Pops? You want me to tell you when you gramps with the beard over there? Just, I prefer bearded gentlemen. <laughs> a very long day. Incidentally, photographic equipment is strictly forbidden in this courtroom. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. He said he wouldn't testify if he couldn't bring it. I'd like special permission if that's possible. Wait, so you're saying you had to bargain terms with the lost kid and you lost? Hey, I just got this new camera. Don't really know how to use it all good yet, but I bring it with me wherever I go. Phoenix, I wonder if he had that camera on the day of the murder. He did. You better make a note of that in the court record. No, it was made in the court record. Very well, Cody. Please testify to the court about what you saw the day of the incident. Testimony! I wanted to see a Steel Samurai rehearsal just once. I found a map on the internet and went to the studios that day. I went through the woods of the path so the old lady wouldn't catch me. I was going for the studio. I got kind of lost on the way though for about 30 minutes. When I came out of the studio, there was a Steel Samurai! I totally rocked! Right before my eyes out came the bad guy. Of course, the Steel Samurai took him down! Pow! If I had my camera with me, that would have been the time for a shot, I tell ya. Anyway, I couldn't get into the studio, so I went home. He didn't have his camera with him? I thought he did. He just said if I didn't have my camera with me. But he mm. did have it. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination, but be gentle. Remember you're talking to a child. This kid is tougher than most adults we see in here, honestly. <laughs> Alright, let's start pressing. If I had my camera with me, that would have been... So why didn't you have your camera? If you had your camera? You mean you weren't carrying your camera then? No, I wasn't. It's not like I have it all the time. He just said he had it with him everywhere he went. Yeah. Really? I guess seeing the killing freaked him out and he went home. Phoenix. Remember, he's a child. Use gentle words, but be firm. Easy for you to say. Get through the words. We didn't press that. <laughs> Off the path? Yeah, you know how the studios are in a valley there. If you go off the path a little, there's woods. That's where I was. So that means that you can get to there. But, maybe, but how would they have gotten in? They just would have been around. Yeah. I see. Anyhow. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully he'll bring up how he always has his camera with him. Or that. Or the camera. Maybe that. It contains every victory scene. No! God! Uh, don't penalize me! No! I must be on the wrong track. So now let's try the camera. That's the only thing I can think of other than the scrapbook. Yes, music quit. Cody, what you just said seems, well, a little strange. Didn't you say before that you always bring your digital camera wherever you go? Were you quite clear about that? Or you were quite clear about that? Oh my. Oh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Cody, you shouldn't lie here. You understand that, right? Mr. Wright, a word with you. Listen, Judge. Uh-oh, was I putting on the pressure too much? What is this digital camera contraption you're talking about? Okay, hey, boomer. boomer. <laughs> <laughs> it's um a digital camera, Your Honor. It's kind of a new sort of camera. How do I explain that? I see. Anyway, Cody, I can't believe you wouldn't bring your camera on a trip to the studios. You did bring it, didn't you? Um... Mr. Wright, how cruel you are to terrorize a poor child, sir. I don't care if he's a child or a prosecuting attorney. No one should lie in court. Oh. Ooh, Sassa Edgeworth. What do you mean, or a prosecuting attorney? Well, Cody... But what? Yeah, so I have my camera, so what? You got a problem with that? I, I do, actually. <laughs> so you did have a camera. And did you use this camera? Well, why would I use it? I was too busy watching. Hmm. Very well. Please testify to the court about what you were so busy watching. I think we're getting there, though. Uh-huh. What I saw. 
Yeah, I had my camera with me, but I was glued to the action. I couldn't take my eyes off it. The steel samurai, he goes for the bad guy. Wham! Then, then the bad guy stopped moving. He's so strong, the steel samurai rules! <sighs> ah, is that all? Well, that was brief. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Yeah, I had my camera with me, but I was glued to the action. I couldn't take my eyes off it. The steel samurai, he goes for the bad guy. Then, then the bad guy stopped moving. Press. Why? Huh? What do you mean, why? Why well, wasn't the bad guy moving? Well, because the steel samurai brought him to justice. And how exactly did he do that? How did he do it? With a samurai kick and a samurai punch. Samurai chop, snap. Something like that. He's still being vague about this. What? Don't give me that, like... How should I play this? Press him harder. Sure. Cody. Something's bothering me. Before you said that you couldn't take your eyes off the action. Yeah, so what? Yet you missed the most important part. Objection. What is the meaning of this? The witness has stated what he saw quite clearly. <laughs> you know as well as I do that he's objection? being vague. I have reverse card. Uno reverse. Tell me what kind of murderer uses a samurai slap. Urgh. My point is this. Cody, you have may have seen some of the Steel Samurai's fight. But you missed the most important part. The killing blow. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, how could this be? Can you explain how he might have been something so vital? Um, well, uh, that's the thing. Phoenix, I believe you're on the right track with this. Think, why didn't Cody see the climax of the fight? I know you, you can figure this out. Mr. Wright, your answer. We have been ascertained that the young boy is the great fan of the Steel Samurai. Why wouldn't he watch the climax of the fight? Uh, he couldn't watch it. He was watching something else. Show evidence. Uh, uh, I think we should show evidence. I think so, too. Your Honor, I have evidence. Evidence? Yes, Your Honor. Why did Cody look away? Was he, like, trying to take a picture of it, maybe? Maybe. Oh, he's, like, trying to learn how to use his camera, yeah. I guess. So. What's that? The camera? The witness stated that he recently received this camera. Yes, I'm aware of that. He wasn't entirely familiar with its operation. I'm aware of that, too. Correct. Why would Cody be looking somewhere else at the critical moment? Because he was looking at his camera. He was trying to take a picture. Oh! <laughs> Bullseye. What's your problem, Pops? You got a thing for picking on little kids? Pressing, not picking. <laughs> Good job, Phoenix. Cody was lying, clearly. Smart of you to realize that there was no way he could just stand there watching his hero and not take a picture. Right. Cody, there was only one reason why you would have looked away from the fight. And that was because you wanted to take a picture. By having just received your camera, you weren't used to the using it yet. So you missed the climax of the fight, correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, Phoenix, I bet you anything he's holding, hiding more than that. And we will find out what else Cody is hiding on the next episode of Phoenix Wright. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We'll see you later. Bye.